Hello everybody and welcome to my video on the outfit system. So this system is a brand new aspect coming with the uh, Dragon Bones patch and basically what it allows you to do is customize the look of your character in pretty much any way at all. Now I'm going to go into a fair bit of detail on how all of this works, how to access the outfit system, how to use it, how you can get it, where you can get it, the sort of things you could do with it. Um, and I'm aware this won't appeal to everyone, but hopefully it appeals to enough of you because fashion per second is a pretty damn important aspect of the game. If you're not looking sexy, you are uh, already losing this game in my opinion. And that is why we have logged onto my DK who has probably the ugliest set of outfit in the game, Primal Light. Pretty ugly. Um, and we're going to give a demonstration of how this works. So quick few notes about the outfit system. This has replaced the old die system, hence if we go to a die station like follows, we do now have an outfit station, and that is true of houses as well, which I'm obviously current in my house. Um, so if you did have a die station in your house, that will automatically already be an outfit station. And the same is true on the map, so if you ever want to see these, all you've got to do is go into the town, and you'll see this icon here, which labels the outfit system, and that's true of every major town, so if you go into a random one, I don't know where it is in Alakir, but I'm sure we can find it if we hover over. Um, I jinxed it, but basically you can, you just hover over, there it is, outfit system is located in Scholar's Way, etc. You can check that for any town, any place, and you should be able to find it and customize as you like. Other disclaimers, you can only do this once per character on the initial slots you get, but you can delete that setup. So what I mean by that is, when I go into the outfit system, you'll see here I have outfit one available, and that is true for each of my individual characters. Um, to unlock a new outfit you can pay crown store I think it's 1,500 crowns at the moment who knows if that'll be the case when you're watching the video it might change, I don't know but when you do that at the moment it only gives you it on one character, it's not account wide so just keep that in mind if you ever decide to spend money on it it is quite expensive for what you get at the moment we'll see if they ever change that uh, but in the end if you've got money hanging around and you really like this and there is a lot you can customise then go for it by all means it's entirely your choice Final things to mention then is how you actually get the station for your house. Obviously, all you need to do is rip vouchers. You can also buy it in a guild store, and that's nice and easy to do. But you don't need it in your house. Like I said, you can access it pretty much anywhere open world. Last but not least, before we go into some examples, to actually use this, you are going to need to have motifs on your account. Notice I said account, not character. They did make a big change. So previous patches, you would have had to have your character have each of the individual motifs to actually use those in crafting styles, etc. Those are now account wide, and if you're a console player, I can't advise enough that you try get hold of the rarer motifs as fast as you can before this is released on console. I think it's the 27th. Don't quote me on that. I'm probably wrong. Normally I am. Who knows? Um, but when it is released on the console, I promise some rarer motifs, things like minor or chests, I think, Ebon Shadow staff, that sort of stuff are going to disappear quickly from the market because it's very popular. The first five, six days, even right now, after a week of PCU, it is crammed around the outfit systems. It is currently half past 10 English time. Most of the Russians, it's going to be like 3 a.m. or something. And I was in Craglon just now, and there was probably about 30 people around it. So it's really busy. The motives are flying up in price. Stock up what you can on popular ones. Anyway, enough blabbing about all of that. Let's actually go into the outfit system itself and give you a demonstration on how to use it. So when you first log into the outfit, you're going to have these things labeled as no outfit. When you are in there, you will only be able to dye your current sections, etc. And we just apply changes and it will accept. That is free to do. So if you ever want to dye random pieces of armor in a color, that is free to do. If you want to do an outfit, this will cost you gold, but very, very little in terms of changing color. What you'll need to do is at the top left of your screen, you'll see this outfit option. We go onto outfit one, and that will activate your outfit. And that is where we can start to change armor styles, weapon styles, and dye this stuff. But when we are now dying that armor, it will cost us a little bit of money if we do choose to change the trait. So just keep that in mind. So let's give a little demonstration of the actual overview. So for example, if we go into armor styles, we can see quite obviously armor styles. So here we go, we go into the helm section and you could change to no helm, different helms, different styles. And each of these will have individual prices. 
I haven't really worked out exactly how they've done that. I know that the basic motifs, things like Argonia and Breton, they're 100 gold. And then some of the rarer ones, DLC ones, start to progress. So purple motive here is Ancient Elf. That would be 250 gold. Um, and we have Ancient Orc, which is DLC purple. In Pages, that is 500. And then we have Mage DLC Recent. Popular style is 2000. Again, not entirely sure how they've priced the individual ones here. But just keep in mind, if you're on a budget, you might want to look at that as you go. If you go with pretty easy styles, it's not going to cost you very much. So if you are a poor person, either farm the money or just take your time looking at what the costs are. So let's give a proper run. Like I said, I did pick a really, really ugly character just to make this a bit more applicable. Now, something else worth noticing when you are doing a particular piece is if we do obviously like our Scoria, who doesn't like Scoria, we can just get off that and we can go to chest. But we don't only have access to light chests despite the fact that we're using light. We can actually go to medium chests and we can go to heavy chests. So you have a lot of customization available to you and you can make pretty much anything at all. There are a few other things. So this one here is the prisoner's set. Um, there are also motives still to come, so these are not currently released. I have all the other motives for you guys on the video. The Prisoner set, if you are interested, comes when you reach level 40 on a character. It's with the new reward system, which I might make a video on. Don't know yet, we'll see. Uh, but you need to actually level a new character to 40. They might patch that in the future, I don't really know. But if you do want to use those, those will basically look like the uh, costume you first get in when you log into the game as a brand new account, I believe. So, let's put a random piece of armor on. We need to click the armor choice, and then we need to click our piece, or we need to double click the armor. So let me quickly undo that. Undo changes. Uh, if I just click it, it doesn't do anything. If I click and drag, we'll unlock it, or if I double click, we'll unlock it. And then we have our style piece on, and we don't have an ugly primal chest, which is happy days. If we then want to obviously go into dyeing that, simply click the dyes button, select which colors you like, and put them on basically so if we want it all white we click white uh, if we want it all black we put it black now depending what sort of armor you actually have whites and blacks and all these colors will come up quite different so just keep that in mind if you do want a particular color you'll need to style that around your armor so for example as you can see my white on the belt section comes up sort of a fairly brownish and it's not a particularly nice color so you might dye it slightly different the dyes themselves are locked from your achievements so for example if I was to get Theory and Archive completed, I unlock Julianus White. We could then hover over another random one, unlocked by the Spirit of Bosma achievement. And all of those, if you are a new player, can be accessed uh, very, very easily by going to this section here on the journal, clicking the Achievements button, and then checking through. And you can see your summary page and all of that. It's not my main, so obviously I haven't got them. Um, but I do have all the dice on my main to actually show you in here. And you can sort these in two different ways. You can obviously go sort by hue or rarity, depending what suits you in look. So that way you can see what you're sort of tracking and work on your progress. What else is there to discuss? So obviously I've talked about using the armor styles. I've talked about using the different pieces. Again, these motives are account wide, so you can use any single piece you'd like and you can customize that completely. But new as well in this patch is weapon styles. Now, these actually come a little different. You'll notice I'm currently using a sword one-handed. However, if you are using a one-handed weapon, you are actually able to change that to anything you like. So, for instance, if I decided suddenly, for whatever bizarre reason, that my very sexy EP sword was not nice, I could actually put a Fasala style axe on there. I don't remember what style that is. That would be Thief Guild, I think, etc. And by doing that, you actually have a... Uh, a lot of customization on your weapons. That's only true for this. You can't, for instance, change a sword into a staff. You couldn't change a two-handed sword into a, uh, a shield or anything like that. But you can make your one-handed weapons or your two-handed swords into axe mates or a uh, sword. I don't know if you can make it dagger, probably. Yeah, you can. There you go. And that obviously gives you a lot of freedom. So that is very handy to do. Finally, what I'll do quickly is I'll just put something random to get together. So let's just shove some random stuff on. It doesn't matter very much because I use a costume on this character. So let's pick a chest of choice. Let's go for this one. The weapon's very sexy. Uh, let's go for a glove. I don't know. Let's bunk whatever that is on, etc. There's a little bit. So it's clearly different right now. And I'll show you how we actually apply this. We click apply. That will save the changes. You can see that it cost me the gold to do so. If I was to change that again, 
Again, it would cost us gold, etc. And that is going to save the look on our character. Now, if I wanted to change the outfit, I could quite easily do that. I would simply drag that off and we go back to our original style. And that way you can save and reset your outfit and save yourselves the traits. Um, but that's going to depend if you want to do that. If you do want to run more than outfit on one character, you are unfortunately going to have to go the crown route. So try and find something you like and mix it up bit by bit. And that way you'll save yourself a lot of money by just dragging them off like so and saving to get your old look. I think that's covered everything. Have I missed anything? I'm thinking. I don't think so. Uh, so there you go. That is the outfit system. This obviously comes with the Dragon Bones patch. You will not have to have the DLC, I think. I'm pretty certain you don't. I think it's game-wide. So if you don't have ESO Plus to get that DLC, um, you won't need to have so. And if you don't have the base game, well, why are you watching my video, basically? But there you go. That is the outfit system as a whole. I think I've covered everything. If I did miss anything, bung it in the description. If you have enjoyed the video, you're a new guy, please like the video, subscribe. It really helps get the videos out there. It gets the popularity on the channel and it means that I know I'm doing a good job because if people don't want to see this sort of video, I need to know. Tell me in the chat what sort of videos you would like to see. Bung it in the YouTube comments. I will take a look and I'll make something work for you guys. Like I said, I'll be making videos every single day for the foreseeable future. Expect it regularly and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video.